today it's Phil from PT Precision Automotive again. We've got a, uh, a 2015 model Toyota Prado, it's a 1KD FTV engine, a later model engine. Um, the customer's complaint is it's a little bit knocky, uh, around 1500 to 2000, sort of a diesel kind of knock, but he has had um, this back to Toyota complained about it, Toyota really didn't want to do much about it, he had it to another diesel company, they have um, replaced the diesel injectors, all four of them, and fitting kit onto that, which is great. He said he's pulled the manifold off and inspected and he reckons it's full of carbon and oil and everything. So we're going to do a decarbon, I'm going to just do my preliminary checks, um, so I've got all the... Um, the codes that have been written into the ECU off. I've rechecked to make sure that they're all coded because we can find, yeah, people replace the injectors, but they don't code them to the car. The car will still run, but it may not run well and have other issues. So I've, I've checked every, each injector, they're in the right spot and they're coded correctly. That's done. Um, I've just checked a bit of the history on it. It's got 121,000 Ks on it. I'll take it for a drive, I'll have a listen to it. Uh, I'm going to have a look at the um, compensation um, live data on the um, scan tool. One thing that can cause these to get a bit knocky is it's got an iDrive system in it, so a bit of a performance chip, I suppose you can program it, you guys would know about that. They can cause the, an engine knock or a, a diesel knock noise from it. I've had it myself, I've ripped mine off, I don't use them anymore, although they boost up the the engine and give you plenty of power. When I go down to the snow and it's really cold, the engine felt like it was going to throw a piston out. So I, I personally, I've removed mine. I don't, I don't use it anymore. Anyway, we'll just see what this does. I do want to come around here and just start it up. due to the um, the manifold being blocked as well so we will find I'm going to take this for a drive up listen to it and once we strip the manifold down we'll um, we'll see how bad that is there oh, all right so just take it for a run feels like it's good good power as it is anyway severe, I would say. It's got all right power. I wouldn't say it's over the top great, but it's certainly got a bit there. Oh, just let this person go. No, I should say that I scanned it for any fault codes. There was about seven or eight fault codes, but they were just nonsense ones relating to air conditioning and radio and stuff. The quantities that come down, so it's getting hotter, so it's getting better. This is the common thing with these Toyotas. They're really bad in the morning. It's reasonably good power. Yeah, 121. He reckons it's blocked up depends on some of these Toyotas whether they blocked up or not if they're doing short trips start stop they definitely will be blocked up and carboned up at this sort of kilometers I've seen it all before but if, it, if they're on the highway constantly running for hours they're generally pretty clean but the unfortunate part is <laughs> you actually don't know until you start stripping it apart I mean you can stick a borescope down there and sort of get some sort of idea or you 
pull the top part of the manifold off, but mate, you might as well commit to ripping it all off. The V8s are worse. Um, and they're a big job. It sounds alright. And the compensation is getting better because it's getting warmer. Number two is a bit of an issue. Um, but they got brand new ejectors in it not long ago. So anyway, we'll see how we go. Okay, I'm about um, a bit over halfway through it. <laughs> you can clearly see the build up there. Yeah? That's the back of the valve, front of the valve. These, look at that one, chocolate block. So it's gonna get worse as I go down in there. I'm not gonna film plenty of videos on there where I pull it all apart. But anyway, it's a tedious job. If you're gonna do it, make sure you got blank offs for the, you know, the diesel injection. Um, pipe outlets and inlets to the injectors and stuff like that. Block them off. Don't let any shit go in there. Yeah? Uh, yeah, okay. It's last bolt here. I forgot to get the, there's a harness down the back on the swirl flap, actually right itself. Get that off. This should be it. Oh, fuck. That harness down there, yeah. Down the, right down the back. Pain in the ass to get to. Jack the car up and get it off. So, she's pretty chug a block. Oh, I'll stick my finger in it. Oh. Yeah. That's it. Gummed up. It's fucked. Yeah. Need it doing. Yeah? How the valves. Give us that. Yeah. On the inside. They're not the worst I've seen. It's still got a fair bit of junk in it. The front front two are wet. That one's not so bad. Let's see what. So to clean all those. So what you do is you turn the turn the motor over, close the valves, clean them up. Do each one, it's painful. Yeah. Right now, so I got all bits and pieces on that bench here. So if you if you're gonna do it at home, yeah, this is what you'll first see in there. There's nothing there, yeah? So you're not gonna see any carbon build up. Further you go along, you're gonna see these tubes that go in. It's going to look a little bit dirty. Right, the next slot you're going to see is the EGR. That's starting to build up, right? The back of that. That's the front of it, sorry. The back of it looks worse, right? That's when it goes down. That's what the EGR sits in front of. That starts to build up. That's the port it goes down in. Have a look at this. This is just on here. That's 120,000 k's, yeah? That's just... <laughs> I mean, there's plenty more to have. Right, that's just out of that... I'm not going to scrape it, it's going to make a filthy mess, right? So when it comes into the, the bottom part of the manifold, you can see in here, all this... I mean, I'm just... Look. Ah, oh, it's all in the pool. That's just falling out of there. Like all this is chucked up in here. It's not the worst I've seen. <laughs> it's not great, yeah? You know all these butterflies and everything, they're all got build up. On the back side of these, they've got build up everywhere, yeah? So there's chunks everywhere. Oh, look at that. But then you got the EGR cooler. Now what I did notice actually with this EGR cooler when I what I do is I test all these vacuum all these vacuum diaphragms, the, the turbo the filters and EGRs, I test all these with a mighty vac. What I did I test this one and it was binding up. Now it's not so bad, but that's that's what happens, the carbon gets in there and builds up. 
inside there and I'll jam these valves up. This valve, the EGR core is not so bad. I, I can blow through that really easily. Generally speaking, they're not. I don't know if you can see in there too well, but you know, it's it's blocked, but not not badly. So that'll that'll end up really well. We'll do all these in the sonic bath uh, and a hot wash, everything afterwards, and then they'll change. But it's you know, it is what it is. Oh, watch out for these gaskets to stick up. A bit of parrot, these little bastards here, these little cookies. They stick up, I'll touch up, touch it easy, yeah? Or a bit of um, okay, so I'm in the process of cleaning all the manifold and everything. We've had most of the parts sitting in the hot wash overnight, then they go in the parts washer, and then I do a final clean and inspect on everything as I go. Obviously, just, you know, cleaning up manifolds and stuff. I check all the valves, so the little filter valves, these are susceptible to breaking. I check all the, this is your EGR valve. I've checked the diaphragm on this. I've checked the movement on this. It's nice and free now. It's really free. So that's great. Obviously we replace all gaskets with all genuine. I keep all, I keep all the genuine gaskets here, the manifold gaskets, everything. So just check the EGR valve. Obviously that's open now. Make sure with Mighty Vac, then I've got plenty of vacuum on it. And that holds, yeah, and that, that way I can actually clean them. The bottom part of the valve as well, so um, it's all coming together. It's just it's a filthy job, yeah. So it's time-consuming and dirty, dirty. Okay, so I've just about finished cleaning all the ports. I go over the front of everything with a razor blade, make sure there's none of that black um, part of the paint stuff for the gasket, the manifold gasket. So it's all pretty clean, ready to go. Whatever else is left in these ports or down on the valves the um the solution that we use will rinse all that off and clean all that up so nearly getting closer it's a full-on job here um okay so i've just about finished well i have I've finished preparing everything um so the manifold's all clean you know so it's all nice and good yeah the egr coolers come up well i mean that wasn't a problem anyway that you can see down in there but um no, i don't know if you can see it it's too dark. Um, that wasn't too bad, actually. That was pretty good. So I'm ready to go. I've got all my gaskets, everything like that. So I'll start assembling it, putting it back together. It's a tedious, long job to put it all back together. This is a filthy, dirty job. No one else. If, if you think that you can have someone come out and do a decarbon on the car with solutions that run through that intake manifold and do what I've done, you're full of shit. Like that's, that's bullshit. I mean, 15 years ago, we were told that that's what you could do. Possibly if it's a new car, like if it's 20, 30,000 Ks, it's not going to hurt to do that preventative maintenance kind of thing with solutions going through the manifold and cleaning it out and dumping the oil and filter. Sure, that's going to help prevent the massive buildup, but you can't tell me that that stuff is going to come off by a solution running through the manual. You, you're throwing your money to the wind. Forget it. Go and put it on red or black at the casino as far as I'm concerned. Well, don't even do that because you might win. But I can guarantee you, you won't win if you do that. And if anyone's doing that to your car, don't bother spending the money. Save your money, wait a couple of times, then do it properly and rip the manifolds off. Have someone manually clean them. Like, it takes hours and hours and hours to do it. Flex different chemicals, you're doing hot washes, you're doing high pressure washes, and then you're doing manual cleaning, and then new gaskets, and new, then I'm gonna put it back on, then I'm gonna run solutions through it just to wash anything else out, and then dump the oil and filter. So this is the right way to do it. And I know I've got videos up there of doing it through the manifold, and I've, I've commented back on there, so this is not the way to do it, and anyone doing that is full of it. Can't do it, don't do it. All right. Okay, so I've got it all back together. Eileen running. I've just checked the compensation codes, or compensation for the diesel fuel injectors. They're a little bit high when they're cold, around the twos. Um, but as it warms up, it's getting a bit better. Okay, one. Number one, 1.2, number 
two is minus one four. Number three is zero now. Number four is zero now. So I'm just going to do, because I'm not replacing these diesel injectors, I'm just going to do a clean, like a servicing clean on them. We run solutions through the diesel injection pump and the injectors, and that'll clean, clean all that system out anyway. So I'll get that started. Right. Okay, so this is just now set up. So feed line's red, black's return. That's just down to the injection pump and then the return line out of the return from the projector. So this will run, this solution um, will run about half hour, 40 minutes, depending on how it takes it. Uh, and we'll see how that goes there. Yeah. Okay, so I've done the I've done the injectors. I'll slip that run through. I put a um, engine flush in it. Now and then I'll run that around the block and then I'll redo it. We use this uh, the tune-up stuff. That's good shit. That's a, a flush and then I'll uh, I will actually put a diesel uh, additive into the tank as well from tune-up. They're really good. Yes we use their we use their products they're, they're good products. We do that for the injection clean as well. Uh, it's trade only this stuff but you know, it does, does a good job and the, the people who sell this stuff stand by their product and they're really good people to deal with yeah so they're very good anyway it's looking good the injectors are looking good but i've got to let everything run through and then do a final i'll do i'll do engine oil and filter now once i've done that flush and then i've got to degrease the whole thing okay so i've just got the decarboning part doing this is like the induction flush that we use so it goes through the induction system and that rest of the pistons and valves and through the exhaust and stuff, it'll constantly blow smoke all the time, you know, that. It's only just been on for a few minutes now, so I've got that rod, I've just got to stand and, and mind it and watch it, yeah. Just gonna drop the oil out of this thing now. Let's get everything in it. Oh Jesus, look at that. Oh, that's just running out of there. Yeah, that's good. So this is it, sort of basically finishing now. That's the oil. That's black as the ace of spades. Running as. Yeah, but that's like water coming out of there. Now that's that decarboning doing its job, yeah? The thing already is going a lot better and a lot smoother and much more responsive. So it should be good, yeah? So let that drain. That'll be fine. Okay, so I've finished. It's on echo as well. I'll get it off echo. Um, so I've finished everything on it now. Uh, I've just done the pilot relearns and the relearns. Got the fuel system, oil filters. Whoa. Yeah, this is heaps, this is heaps different. This is heaps different from the car that it was. Much more responsive. What the fuck is this coming down the road? What's this yellow thing? What is that? It's a, it's a bug. It's a Lambo. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's good. That's more responsive now off that. That's great. So that seems pretty good. A lot more responsive. I think you'd be happy with that. Whoa. We've got to do a transmission service on this thing as well, which then we'll do a relearn on the transmission after it's done. Um, but all in all, it looks like it's worked out quite well. It's a bit more, more responsive. Well, it's definitely more responsive. Heaps more pull in that mid-range, easily. But um, So that's all the manifolds off, decarbon through injectors and through manifold, oils, filters, and a full reset. That's worked out quite well. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's fucking that's awesome, actually. That wasn't like that before. 
Hang on, so that's, that's worked out well, yep. Okay. I just don't know if you, I was a bit distracted in the last part of that video. I did hear a noise coming from under the bonnet. It's a high pitch sort of whistle. I don't know if you'll pick it up on the video or not. But I can hear it like a kind of noise, like under acceleration. So to me, that's an exhaust leak. So, you can't hear any noise now. That's it, it's perfect, right? I can, I can slightly hear it, just under load, the exhaust. It's a, that's a high-pitched whistle noise that you hear on diesel engines. It's a common problem that people don't, or misdiagnose. They, they go, there's a whistling noise coming, and they think, where the fuck's it coming from? But it's generally an exhaust gasket or exhaust crack somewhere. And on this one, I found it, um, it was actually I left the bolts loose on the on the bottom of the EGR valve. There's a two bolt flange with the new gasket and all that. I actually left those um, bolts loose so that it made that I must have been distracted by something. That shit happens, you know, but it found it before the car was released anyway, which is good. But it's a massive job undertaking to pull one of those. <laughs> those manifolds down anyway, you're better off being left alone to do it peace and quiet and I've got phone calls coming on every day all day every day and being interrupted so yeah, this makes happen but that's good but anyway the um, the compensation for the injectors after it's been done um, whilst cold is very good is ones or less than ones um, now um, hot the number cylinder one is the worst out of it but it's not actually even worse it's perfectly within spec it's 0.8 positive but um, the other ones are minus 0.3 minus 0.6 you know minus, minus 0.2 perfect it's fucking better than what it ever was so and it's it's picked up here like it's got heaps of more acceleration and pull through that that 2000 upwards it's got an, an enormous amount of pull on it now where it really didn't before it was easy to drive it was very comfortable to drive but it didn't have that throwback where this you could feel it straight away oh no that's less than two so all in all it's good it's a big job you know i videoed most of this one guys were saying they wanted to see more i videoed as much as i possibly could you know two people distracted you know doing this so hopefully that gives you some sort of insight into this um, do not go doing just chemicals down the throttle body. It's, it's fucking no point. Just you're throwing your money away. Unless the car's got 20 to 40,000 Ks and you want to do it as preventative maintenance, possibly, yes. Um, but then you go over 80 to 100, don't bother. Pull the manifolds off. Save your money. Do it then. Do it properly. Okay.